Hello and welcome. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to paint um, a lovely simple sea and sky uh, landscape uh, with a simple and beautiful fishing boat um, and some dolls. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, you can see I've got my paper already taped down on my board which is set at a roughly 45 degree angle uh, so my paint runs and I'm just wetting uh, the top two thirds of the page uh, with my large uh, Harco brush and because this is going to be the sky I want a lovely big uh, vast expanse of blue sky here so what I've done is I'm using a mix of Payne's Grey, Prussian Blue, Raw Umber um, and a good dollop of Cobalt Blue all mixed up on my palette with a decent amount of water and you can see I'm just using really large, uh, careful sweeps of my large brush to uh, pull the paint across uh, and try and get those colours the way I want them. Um, I wanted a nice sweep of blue along the top, uh, which I'm putting in here, and I'm just going to let the water take the paint uh, and run it down the rest of the paper, which is wet. You can see already that lovely uh, cobalt blue is uh, drifting down the page with the water. Uh, you can see the water gathering at the edge there where I haven't wet the paper uh, using my brush to remove this. Uh, we don't want this um, because as the uh, paint dries it can the uh, excess water can bloom up into cauliflowers or other sort of uh, ugly marks that we don't really want. So while the sky is drying I'm putting in the sea now, using my Harco brush again, slightly awkwardly with the camera there, I apologise. Um, and I'm using a technique called dry brushing, uh, which leaves um, some white of the paper showing through, uh, which uh, mimics the lovely speckle and glint of light uh, off of the ocean. And you can see as well that I've used exactly the same uh, colours for the sea that I have for the sky. That lovely grey colour with a little blue. just want to get that horizon line a little brighter. So this is something you can do. You can use tissue or as you see here I'm using a cotton bud. Uh, and I'm just pulling out that horizon line there that got a little bit lost when the paint blended between the sea and the sky. There are other techniques you can use for this of course. Um, but this is one of them. So this also is going to be a cloudy sky. So while I'm happy with this lovely drift of colour here, um, I decided to use a tissue to pull out some of the paint and reveal the white of the paper uh, in a generic sort of cloud formation. Uh, this was not done from any reference photo or anything like that. This was just simply what my... Uh, imagination decreed that I do. So uh, you can see me there, just a little bit of um, ordinary uh, tissue or uh, kitchen towel also would be very useful for this. Uh, just patting away there at that paint while it's still wet, uh, pulling out some of the colour and leaving these lovely sort of fluffy white uh, drift of clouds. Uh, I also decided to do this in the sea at the bottom. Uh, to try and give uh, the impression of a beautiful uh, reflection of the cloudy sky uh, coming into the sea below.
as you can see, just making a few minor adjustments here. Try not to tamper with it too much. It's always the problem with watercolour, that temptation to, uh, to come in and start messing with it once it's on the paper. Um, but you can see here, I still wasn't happy with that horizon line, so I've just come in with some tissue and I'm now blotting out that part where the paint has run. Um, I folded it up and I'm using it, as you can see, to get a straight line out of that horizon. You can see that now looks nice and pale. And there's, um, there's actually a differentiation between the sea and sky there. And there we are. So, decided to uh, leave that to dry as I'm happy with that. You can see now the painting is dry. Um, I apologise for the change in light. Um, took a while to dry this one. Um, and this is my fishing boat that I've put on a piece of tracing paper, a rough outline that I've taken from a photograph that I found online. And I'm just positioning it here, which is uh, where I want it to be. And there it is, magically appearing. Um, I simply used the traced outline, held it over, and uh, copied it with pencil. And uh, to get the, uh, the boat in the place that I wanted, uh, roughly going for the rule of thirds here, so it's sort of in the, that bottom sort of third of the painting, I thought would give it a nice, uh, give the painting uh, a nice composition. So now that I've penciled it in, I'm using a fine brush. Uh, this is a round brush uh, that I usually use, I think it's triple zero size, uh, to start putting in some of the detail on the boat. I am using a reference photo for this, well, for the vague outline at least, um, but in terms of the colours, um, I'm sort of <laughs> making it up as I go along rather. Um, I enjoy doing this, it sort of seems to, to me it gives the paintings a little more of a life of their own rather than just being straight copies of something. Um, and I must admit, the fishing boat picture that I used online was a little more complicated than this. Uh, I did have to simplify the shapes down, uh, which is something that I uh, often find myself doing with watercolour, which is a really uh, good skill to learn. Uh, looking at uh, a shape like a boat you know, with rigging and engine and nets and all this sort of complicated things uh, and seeing what lines are important, what lines really sort of give the boat its definition and pulling those out and putting those on the paper. So you can see here with the hull of the boat, I'm giving it a sort of a, a bluish tint and here I'm using some Prussian blue mixed with Payne's Grey to fill this in and I've actually put a little line of uh, raw umber as well along the um, the top part of the hull there and, and I'm allowing that to drift into the blue and give it a sort of a, uh, a sea-worn impression. I'm continuing to use uh, my little mix of Payne's Grey and Prussian Blue uh, to begin outlining the rest of the boat.
as you can see here I'm still using this very fine brush this is a very useful tool to have or if you have um, a set of riddle brushes fine riddle brushes are very useful for this sort of thing as well you can see I'm just breaking down the sort of shapes of the boat to make it a bit easier to sort of get my head around what's what and <laughs> what goes there uh, so I've focused mainly on the hull as the uh, the base to sort of get that shape right I've got it sitting quite low in the water um, you see I think there's a little outboard motor on the back uh, starting to put in some sort of uh, rigging sort of winching mechanism here uh, put a little rail on the front uh, and I started to outline the uh, cabin that's on the deck as well. A lot of things, they look complicated when you look at them in a photo, you think, oh gosh, I can't paint that. But really, once you just properly look at it and think, actually, I can simplify this down to a few straight lines, uh, trace it out and get it on your painting, you'd be surprised at how easy the process actually is. And so you can see here, I've filled in the, uh, done the main outlines for the boat. Just putting in a little bit of extra detail here. Uh, putting in uh, a little bit of, a little flash of colour. I'm using light red for this. Uh, again with my fine brush. Um, deciding what bits I want to leave white and what bits I'd like to, uh, to give that little flash of colour to. I think the light red works really nicely against the, uh, the sort of blue grey mix of colours that we have here. Uh, then it just sort of jumps nicely off the page, it brings that boat uh, really into its own um, and I'm really really pleased with it. I'm, I'm going to start using it a lot more I think it might be one of my new favourite paints. You can see in these parts uh, particularly along there, that sort of part of the boat, the, the hull of the boat. Um, I've almost uh, used the brush to almost scribble on the paint. I'm leaving a little bit of white. Uh, you can see there the paint almost looks raggedy. Uh, this is deliberate. I'd like to uh, 
show it looking a little bit sort of careworn, almost, you know, almost like the paint has been sort of almost rusted away or washed away by years at sea. Uh, and giving it a little sort of impression that this is a working boat, this isn't sort of a pretty picture postcard boat, although uh, I suppose this does look rather pretty like a picture postcard in the end, but uh, oh well. I'm pleased with this boat so far. You can see here I um, I smudged a bit, so I'm just using a tissue to um, pull up the excess water that I accidentally blobbed on, uh, and then just redoing this little part here of the cabin. Now that I'm happy with the boat, um, I've decided to put in um, a little bit of extra white. You can see here I'm using uh, white gouache paint to put in uh, the impression of uh, some foam and sea spray coming up around that part of the hull that's uh, cutting through the water, pushing up a little bit of spray, using the white paint to just sort of jump brightly off the painting and give it that impression of, uh, of the boat's movement. I'm only putting this around the bottom part of the boat, a little bit at the front to mimic spray coming up, uh, and I'm going to do a little line behind the boat of the white as well, uh, to give the impression of the boat's wake as it's uh, travelling forwards. You can see here that I'm using my brush horizontally, holding it quite flat, and using uh, using the sort of flatness, the flat line of the brush to help me get a, uh, a straight line here with the white. It's only a little thing, um, if you don't have the white gouache and if you want to use purely watercolour then that's fine, you don't need to worry too much about it, uh, I just like the impression uh, that it gives. And I'm now adding a few extra sort of faint lines in to the water around the boat uh, I'm using a small wriggle brush here, you can see how long those bristles are. I'm still a little wary of wriggle brushes because they tend to swing out of control very quickly in my hands, so I need a bit more practice with them. Uh, but I'm using the fine tip here to put in uh, some lines just to uh, indicate the disturbance in the water as the boat sort of chugs its way along. And for that, uh, colour-wise, I'm using um, a mix of pretty much everything that's on my palette, sort of blue-grey colour, which is, again, it's mostly Payne's Grey, Prussian Blue and uh, Raw Umber to give it that slightly darker feel. And now that I'm happy with the boat, and I'm happy with the sea, it's time to put in some birds. And of course we all know that the uh, the dolls will always follow a, a fishing vessel, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scatter a little cloud of dolls along here. And again I'm using my fine brush, and I'm using Payne's Grey here to do um, a variety of very simple uh, doll shapes. You can see I'm sort of basing them almost off, you know, the typical uh, M shape you can see is usually used as a uh, shorthand for seagulls. You can see I'm not quite doing that, uh, sort of like a, an asymmetrical V is probably the best way that I can describe it. You can see here on this one I've done the sort of the very, very flat asymmetrical V and um, if you use uh, a little bit of extra paint, just darken down the centre, slightly off-centre, if that makes sense. So it's slightly asymmetrical, uh, and that shows the uh, the body of the gull in between the wings. You can see there, making that one one wing slightly longer than the other, because of the foreshortening effect, if it's uh, turned towards the viewer, where the viewer is theoretically standing for this painting. Uh, and I'm setting them uh, at a few different angles as well, 
uh, as they would sort of drift and cloud around the boat. Uh, you can see there, I've put them uh, drifting along the back in the wake of the boat, uh, which I assume is pulling a net filled with fish of some kind. Uh, and the dolls are, as always, ever eager for their share. Uh, their share of anybody's food. It doesn't matter if it's fish, uh, or chips, or noodles, or ice cream, or anything you happen to be eating. <laughs> So this is step two of the dolls. You don't need to do this, again, if you don't have the white gouache, which is what I'm using. It's Winsor & Newton white gouache. Uh, and the white is just going gently over where I've done them in sort of quite a dark Payne's grey, uh, which worked perfectly well for silhouettes, but I decided I want sort of a, a flash of white along the wings there. So I'm just going over along the top um, of these sort of flattened out compressed V shapes just putting in um, little white highlights uh, along the dolls' backs and along their wings, just to lighten them up a little bit. Like I said, this is entirely optional. I think they look just fine as they are in silhouette, um, but I just wanted to give them a little extra zing and show them what could be done. Again, if you don't want to use white gouache, if you like to just keep your paintings to purely watercolour, uh, this is entirely an optional step. Um, or, if you like, you can use masking fluid to paint in your dolls before you do the sky wash. Uh, and that will keep those little white Vs clear for you. You can rub off the masking fluid later and have the dolls already uh, in their place. And here we are, finished painting. Uh, thank you very much for watching, friends. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I certainly did. I love this little boat, it's uh, one of my favourites, um, I love the dolls, um, I love the sky, <laughs> uh, and I hope you do too, and I hope you really enjoyed watching. Uh, thank you again for staying to the end of this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more art, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!